Hey everyone, we're going to do some watercoloring and some stamping today. First, sorry that you're watching this upside down. I can't figure out how to set up my camera so that we can see it right side up. I'm using my precious washi tape to <clears throat> excuse me, border off the edges of the paper so it would be an automatic frame. And if you notice over to your left, there's an inch left over. That's because I'm going to trim my paper down to fit the frame. Now I'm placing the birds on and sketching in my um, wooden pi pylon stumps, whatever they're called. And I placed the birds there just, you know, for measurement's sake. Um, once I get this penciled in, I'm going to go ahead and erase some <clears throat> excuse me, pencil marks and use um, the stamps with um, archival ink, as you can see there, and stamp my birds in place because we don't see the back of the rounded top through the bird because the birds are not transparent. So I picked four of the birds. I love these birds. This is like my, my third painting. I sat and played and did two last night. And then when I got up this morning, I just had to do this. And I'll probably play with them some more because I really, really like these birds. They are just awesome. So I'm stamping them on. And then I am going to take my black marker, which is also an archival um ink on it, but you still have to, you know, let them dry before you're going to put water on it. Now I'm getting my watercolor pencils ready and they're just, um, oh, well, no, I take that back. These big circles I'm coloring in are going to be the flowers. I decided that I didn't want the colors muted. I wanted them to be bright and vibrant, so I'm putting them on first and going to put my background in around them. So I, I, I did this this haul that I didn't share um, from Simon Says Stamps and I got the crazy birds or bird crazy and some um, the round blending tool and some of the um, distress inks, the little small sample package thing you know, that comes four to a color. So I had some before, but I wanted some other different colors. And boy, this can get expensive. So I'm just wetting down my circles now to, you know, get that color to set for it to dry, you know, because the watercolor goes where the water is. So I want those to dry before I start filling in the background. Now I'm going to take my black marker and fill in my lines and uh, get the shapes of the poles, pylons, stumps, whatever they're called that they're, they're going to be sitting on. Right now it looks like they're hanging upside down <laughs> like bats <laughs> because it's upside down. I don't know why that just came to me, but it did. <laughs> But they're not bats. They're just crazy, crazy, crazy birds. Um, a little cross hatching to give the the poles, stumps, pylons, whatever they're called, <clears throat> that round dimension shape. And uh, it, <laughs> anyways, I, I crack myself up sometimes. Um, but yeah, I can see that, you know, this, this little hobby can get expensive, but if, as long as you can use those stamps, like I have, over and over again, then it, it's not a total waste of money. You know, now I'm just darkening it, darkening it in a little bit more. Well, no, now I'm using my uh, brown. So I've got, I have two shades of brown that I'm using in the watercolor pencil. So I'm coloring it all in first. I'm going to do those, and I'm going to color in my background. The only thing I'm not going to color in yet are my birds. But, yeah, so this could be a, um, 
really expensive venture when you're just starting off, but you know, once you accumulate these things, then you know, it's all right there and it's not so bad. But this just happens to be like my last sheet of watercolor paper. And right now as I'm sitting here talking, I I want to paint another picture. Not that I don't have time because I have some work to do and I need to clean my house, but I want to see another picture because I like these breaks. So um, my uh, watercolor pencils are, you know, not expensive ones. They're like just a uh, store brand. They were given to me as a gift and, you know, I've played with them before, but I just happened to watch this other video where the uh, the lady was doing the, the watercolor pencils, and I thought, oh, how interesting it is to do it like that. And, you know, she did this way I'm doing it now. She colored it all in first, applied all her colors, and then added her water. So I had watched, um, first time I ever tried using the watercolor pencils, I had watched uh, the Frugal Crafter do it, and she didn't do it like this at all. And I found this way to be much easier. But so I'm putting in my sky. I'm going to use two different colors of blue, but it really doesn't end up looking like it's two different colors of blue. <laughs> I don't know why. And then I'm going to carry into a yellow that'll mix, you know, with the blue and give me a little greenish yellowish shade and then green towards your top, but it was actually my bottom when I was coloring this. I guess um, I'll have to figure out how to do this so you guys don't have to look at it upside down. So I'm almost finished with this part of the coloring, just throwing the little color splotches in there. Now I'm going to get my wet brush and I'm going to start blending those colors around. Darker on the sides, lighter towards the middle, trying not to mix it in with my flower dots. I tell you, this is hard to talk through this whole video. <laughs> so, you know, I jumped ahead there, the camera had stopped, and I had colored two more of the soul islands, whatever they're called, and, but you didn't miss much of the same thing that's going on now, just adding water to it. You, know, you should have two things of water, one for rinsing your brush, and one for getting clean water to go on to the next color, otherwise, you know, you may have colors mixed that you don't want to mix and end up with some mud on your face. You know, certain colors are fine, you know, like yellow and blue make green, red and yellow make orange, yellow. In pink, you'll come up with a pretty color, you know, it just, but like, purple and yellow kind of go gray. So, if you want a gray color, that's a good thing. Um, so, I'm trying to be a little careful. I'm just applying the water, coloring in the background, and sitting there rambling away as I talk to you. So forgive me. But um, while we're filling in the water, we're getting ready to start our new school year for homeschool, and I'm getting excited about that. We moved um, about a year and a half ago. We haven't met any friends, and we don't know any other homeschoolers in the area, so uh, yesterday I actually saw an advertisement in our little flyer that comes in the mail about this homeschool group that is like right here. So I contacted them on Facebook and we get to go for a park day on the 12th to meet these people and hopefully it works out. They have some pretty cool field trips and stuff coming. Okay, so now I added my water and now I'm going to go in and color in my birds. And this guy I'm trying to do a little purple and pink. So add the water, you know, brush it in, try to blend it, let them run together, let them, you know, kind of mix naturally. So if we're going to do this with all the birds, but not all purple and pink, it's the different colors. I would name the colors to you, but the pencils don't say what color they're on. And I know there's times when I think I'm using red and it's orange, and the orange is red. So it, it's difficult with these these this particular brand of pencils to know exactly what color I'm using other than it's brown, it's red, it's purple, it's yellow, or green, whatever. 
so yeah, um, back to the homeschool thing, I'm like getting really excited about it. I've been spending the last week or so each day a little bit at a time working on the different things to get us all set up and ready to go. And um, after looking at all these field trips and stuff and all these dental appointments that I've been having lately, I'm going to actually have to start using a planner so that I don't double book something. And I've never used a planner. I All of a sudden in my life I feel busy and I'm never busy. Not anymore. I was when I used to work, but not anymore. So this is the last little bird here. Um, I may end up actually naming them one of these days if I, you know, play around with them enough, and I'm sure that I will. But uh, once we, <clears throat> we get all our colors in the way we like them, we're going to go back. We're going to let it dry. We got to let it dry, but then we're going to go back with our black marker and darken some of the areas that, you know, the paint kind of dulled out. Not all of it, just part of it, but you definitely got to let it dry. So now I'm adding in, uh, see I'm getting ahead of myself, I don't even know what steps I took. Now I'm adding in the green um, stems and leaves, which if I had thought ahead of time, I would have done these before I added the first black um, lines and shading there. Because again, you know, they're not transparent, so you shouldn't be able to see, <coughs> excuse me, you shouldn't be able to see the lines through it. And my legs keep breaking, I have to keep stopping and sharpening my pencils. And um, because I'm going over top of another color, I'm having to press pretty hard. That's why my leg keeps breaking, so that that green will actually be green. But you can go over top of colors and build layers. And then I'm just going to, you know, wet them down with the water and the brush. You know, make them look like they're not colored with a colored pencil, but actually painted with the watercolors. And then, after it dries, I will go back to my black marker. It's kind of interesting watching myself do this. Even if it is upside down. So it's a, uh, you know, another really hot day here in rainy Florida. What's hot is the humid is hot. Now we're putting swirls in the color circles to make our flowers and outlining the stem. Now, I was told that if you double outline and, you know, there was a mistake, it wasn't exactly on the line, it makes it look like that's the way it was meant to be. You know, it gives it more of a, a cartoony look, and since our crazy birds here are definitely cartoony, then, you know, this type of technique on the, the flowers and the stems, it, it just looks, in my opinion, looks really great together. I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. Sad that I had to waste my washi tape, but happy that it turned out good. And the washi tape just peels off so nice and easy, you don't tear your paper. I mean, Painter's tape is expensive, and the, you know, artist tape, I mean, regular painter's tape or regular masking tape is like too sticky and it'll peel up a layer of your paper and, you know, after you do all this hard work and spend all that time planning or painting ad lib, however, you know, your style is, you don't want to ruin it because you peeled up a piece of tape and it messed up your, your great work. So... I wasted my washi tape. I figure if I use my least favorite of what I have, then it won't hurt so bad. And not that I don't like those poke out there. I do like them. It just wasn't like my absolute favorite one that I have. Not that I have a lot, but, you know. I used to have a ton, but I gave it all away because I was like, what am I going to use this for? Uh-huh. If I only knew... 
So yeah, continuing to just fill in the black lines. I guess I could have speeded up this segment a little faster, but you know, once you get, this is four times normal speed. Once you get faster than that, it really kind of makes it hard to follow. And uh, so my little uh, bat birds there looking pretty good. The colors just blended in nice and well. I really like the, the little green guy, green and yellow guy over there on the right. I think he's my favorite of all of them. As far as facial expression goes, it's the guy all the way over to the left with his eyes just popping out of his head. I think he's awesome. So now I'm removing my tape, and it leaves that nice border so that when you put it in your frame, and I did this so that it would fit an 11 by 14 frame, it looks like it's already matted, and I'm cutting off that excess piece so that it'll fit into my frame. And, you know, sorry, it's upside down. I wasn't even thinking I could have turned that around. I think this looks so cute. And that was supposed to be a thumbs up, not a thumbs down. But these are my other two that I did. And again, upside down. This one was my first one. And the colors weren't as vibrant because I didn't put as much color down. But I think that one, this one is my favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Watching, not washing. <laughs>